Hello, I'm Mark Tex Wilson. I'm here today at Scobie Dam, which spans Cattaraugus Creek just a couple miles south of Springville, New York. There have been several conflicting reports on its size. The structure that you see is roughly 38 feet high and 330 feet across. It was built in 1925 for the purpose of hydroelectric generation. It replaced a smaller dam built here in 1898 that was only about 20 feet high. Now the camera will be zoomed out for a look downstream. Cattaraugus Creek divides Erie and Cattaraugus counties. I'm not sure if the dam is located in Zor Valley. If not, it's really close. This segment of the creek is known for steelhead trout fishing. It looks like a nice hole on the other side of the stream. A fisherman could be seen walking along its shale bank over there. The dam creates a barrier which keeps the steelhead from getting any further upstream. They tend to congest here, which makes it a good place to catch them. Of course, it's also highly fished. Now the camera sweep will be continued downstream. This is the first time that I've ever been here. The fast moving water with a shale and rocky stream bed is exactly the type of place where I prefer to trout fish. It's pretty impressive to look at and these rapids are pretty treacherous. It's just become obvious why those with a sense of adventure enjoy coming here to do some whitewater rafting in the summer. Here's a quick glance at the deep hole below the embankment where I've been standing and filming thus far. That would be a very bad place to fall into. Not only is it rapid and rocky, it's the end of October and the water is also very cold. The concrete foundation below suggests that a bridge may have spanned here at one time. Of course the rod and reel was brought along. This was actually a fishing trip. So a walk was made out into the shale stream bed to trout these rapids flowing into a pocket. It wasn't intended to be a filming excursion, but having a camera readily available to film and showcase the natural beauty seen here was a bonus. The camera is currently on the other side of the stream from where the filming began. A walk is being made very carefully upstream along the shale stream bed towards the dam. If there is sediment or algae growing on this type of smooth flat rock formation, it can be very slippery and dangerous. There seems to be firm footing today, but it's always better to err on the side of caution. Mother Nature is very unforgiving. The building seen ahead is the power plant. Electricity was produced here up until 1998. The dam is currently 93 years old and its structural integrity is in question. A proposal has been made to reduce its height to 30 feet and construct a fish ladder. This will allow the steelhead access to the prime breeding waters upstream and the mainstream and in all its tributaries. If you pay close attention for about a minute, you'll see steelhead make several failed attempts to jump up the spillway. This is exactly the type of scene that would be expected to be seen in an episode of Animal Planet. As stated earlier, the steelhead tend to congregate here since they can't make it any further upstream. Cattaraugus Creek flows directly into Lake Erie where the steelhead come from. I believe that they come here to spawn in the spring and return to feed in the fall when the salmon are running. Cattaraugus Creek was once abundant with them too. Coho and humpback chinook are the two species of salmon that once thrived here, but their numbers are almost non-existent today. It's quite possible that the lack of access to the fertile tributaries upstream is at least part of the reason for their decline. Most of the steelhead found here are farm raised, though a small percentage is native. The work has not yet begun on the renovations to the dam. There are concerns that invasive species like the sea lamprey may encroach upon the pristine fishing habitats upstream. The waters above the dam are loaded with brown and rainbow trout. Many of the small tributaries also contain native brook trout. There are concerned outdoorsmen who fear that allowing the steelhead upstream will also hinder these other healthy trout populations. A steelhead is really just an oversized lake dwelling rainbow trout, but it's still considered a unique species. This is a friend and fellow YouTube partner, Sportswolf3 from Fast Food Toy Reviews. So far, the trout haven't been very active today. Nobody's been seen catching anything. It's a good thing that we caught a few yesterday about 15 miles downstream in Gowanda. As beautiful as this place is, there are usually far more fishermen present than we're seeing here today. Fishing shoulder to shoulder and crossing lines with guys who have no sense of sportsmanship or etiquette takes the joy out of fishing anywhere. The trip was made here just to see it today, 
but future trips will likely be made where fewer anglers go and ruin the day. After taking a day off of work and driving a long way to get here, all any sportsman can ask for is a little bit of space and respect that usually isn't granted. Scobie Dam was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1996. This trail is the Scobie Dam Hiking Trail. It's roughly 1.7 miles long and follows the creek above and beyond the dam. A walk will be taken up there just to satisfy a curiosity. Since the dam was built between two canyon walls, the big lake that was expected to be seen up here above it is non-existent. One thing that is noticeable is all the mud and sediment that is built up behind it. Up until the mid-1980s, the sluice gates were opened annually to let this buildup of sediment escape and flow downstream. It's obvious that that hasn't been done in a very long time. As the camera sweep is being made upstream, the time to close this video has finally arrived. I'm Mark Tex Wilson. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.